first at 11, tragedy takes another turn in Ellicott City. Police believe the gunfire that killed a teenager, injured her mother, may have been random. The teenage shooter, a church altar boy, is now dead after turning the gun on himself. Tonight, that community there in Ellicott City trying to come to terms with the senseless death of 16-year-old Charlotte Zaremba. Jay Korf has the latest now on what's become a heartbreaking search for answers. Police revealed a lot of information today about a tragedy that has impacted so many, and yet, in many ways, still remains a mystery. Outside 16-year-old Charlotte Zaremba's Ellicott City House, a memorial grows for a young life taken senselessly. Only minutes away, mourners held a private vigil for 15-year-old Sean Kreiser. The boy police say shot and killed Zaremba, then turned the gun on himself. This tragedy began about two hours into the new year inside Zaremba's house. Suzanne, Charlotte's mother, heard a scuffle in her daughter's bedroom. Howard County police say Kreiser, masked and armed with a stolen gun, was struggling in that bedroom with Zaremba. Shots were fired. Charlotte was killed, her mother wounded. Kreiser then shot himself. Detectives have found no link between the suspect and the victim. Police say the victim and the suspect lived in the same neighborhood, went to the same school, but that's where the connections seem to end. Police have, though, linked Kreiser to a couple burglaries in the neighborhood in the weeks leading up to the shooting. A neighbor of the suspect remains shocked that Kreiser, once an altar boy, had turned to crime. I'm in shock. I'm just so overwhelmed and shock. I've known him he's a, since he's a little boy. So detectives will continue to push to dig for more information. They'll look at cell phone records, talk to family, talk to friends, look at social media postings to try to figure out what happened and determine a motive. In Ellicott City, Jay Korf for ABC 7 News at 11. We have an update in the case of a missing Bethesda man. As we first showed you last week, a woman was actually caught here on surveillance tape. She was walking to some shops using his credit card. In fact, she rang up John Donahoe's credit card to the tune of about $700. Well, tonight, Police do confirm that woman is in custody after turning herself in. She's been charged with credit card fraud. But police do not know how she got the card. Donahoe was first reported missing on December 14th and has not been heard from since. All right, looking at a little bit of patchy fog out there right now. Visibility limited, especially the further west you go from D.C. Leesburg down to about a mile. The same over in Manassas, about four miles at Reagan National Airport. Let's talk about tomorrow. We have warmer temperatures that are on the way, and I promise you are going to enjoy them. And while you can, take advantage of it. Highs tomorrow will make it into the middle 50s by midday. A nice mix of sun and clouds, but then colder air, gusty winds, and talking about the chance for snow. Thursday night into Friday morning. More on that in the timing coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Steve, thanks. If you were out and about, maybe you noticed the Washington Monument looks a bit different. You can't see it. The lights are out. The lights normally that illuminate the monument went out. A preliminary investigation shows an issue with the automated program that controls the lights. Electricians will be looking into this in the morning. We'll keep you posted as we find out more, but that is the scene. All you can see are the blinking red lights at the top. Wow, looks strange. Well, new developments now. That U-Haul truck full of possibly stolen ATMs was stolen itself. The truck was reported stolen from Prince George's County last week. It was found in Southeast with four ATMs inside of it. Police are trying to determine if they're the same machines that vanished from Prince George's county in the past month. Maryland is promising to fix the extensive backlog on rape kits and get justice for victims. Now the Office of the Attorney General now recommends testing all sexual assault kits and there are a lot of them and then they want to notify the victims of the results right away and keeping the kits until the statute of limitation runs out. A committee is being formed to be sure that all protocols are followed. For the record, 3,700 cases are still untested. Some of the kits date back to the 1980s. There are new efforts to solve the case of a murdered Democratic National Committee worker. Seth Rich would have turned 28 years old today. He was shot and shot to death in D.C.'s Bloomingdale neighborhood last July. Now, Republican lobbyist Jack Berkman is paying for ads to raise awareness about the case. That includes a billboard and also ads on bus benches. A $130,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest. Some sad news in the world of politics. Virginia State Senator Chuck Colgan has passed away. The Democrat representing Prince William County was the longest serving state senator in Virginia history. He was 90 years old. Mm.
Amid all of the tradition and photo ops of today's swearing in of the 115th Congress, there was plenty of drama, even some legislating that took place. House Republicans scrapped a controversial proposal to eliminate the independent congressional ethics office. Now, in the Senate, the new Democratic leader had a message for President-elect Donald Trump. Making America great again requires more than 140 characters per issue. With all due respect, America cannot afford